Good morning. We are getting closer and closer to the celebration of Christmas, and it is good to be together at this time of year. A couple of announcements. We um, have still have some sign-up sheets on the welcome desk in the back. Still looking for one or two ushers for, I think it's the 10 o'clock service on Christmas Eve, and a few people to usher on the Sunday after the 26th. I also need somebody to light candles next, next week, do the Advent wreath. Um, I hate to call them out. It was supposed to be the Dankos today, but I don't see them yet, so it may well be Eric. You're on it. Good. We're ready to go today, this morning. So um, I just may move them to next week. They don't know it yet. Um, we have wreath sales still one more Sunday today. If you want to buy a wreath, various sizes, uh, proceeds go to benefit the youth. Uh, Eric will be taking care of that outside in the parking lot right out here between services after the second service. And finally, a big thank you to everybody who um, worked on The Gift Goes On. Again, the uh, response is just overwhelming, gratifying, something to give thanks for. Um, it was just really, really nice. 49 individuals, um, 14 families within our congregation from Head Start, from Ramsey County, uh, were uh, provided with gifts uh, to brighten their, their Christmas season. So thank you to everybody who participated in that. Thanks to Liz Nelson, she's just walking in, but she did a great job. <laughs> organizing that, pulling it together, it just went, she just makes it run so smoothly, so appreciate that. All right, we'll begin our worship with words of confession and forgiveness. Please rise as you are able. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. <clears throat> Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us, even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, we have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. seated. We praise you, O God, for this victory wreath that marks our days of preparation for Christ's advent. As we light the candles on this wreath, strengthen our hearts as we await the Lord's coming in glory. Enlighten us with your grace that we may serve our neighbors in need. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. Amen. Stir up the wills of all who look to you, Lord God, and strengthen our faith in your coming, that transformed by grace we may walk in your way. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for today is from the book of 2 Samuel. Then King David went in and sat before the Lord and said, Who am I, O Lord God? What is my house that you have brought me thus far? And yet this was a small thing in your eyes, O Lord God. You have spoken also of your servant's house for a great while to come. May this be instruction for the people, O Lord God. And what more can David say to you? For you know your servant, O Lord God. Because of your promise and according to your own heart, you have wrought all this greatness so that your servant may know it. Therefore you are great, O Lord God. For there is no one like you and there is no God besides you, 
according to all that we have heard with our ears. Who is like your people, like Israel? Is there another nation on earth whose God went to redeem it as a people and to make a name for himself, doing great and awesome things for them by driving out before his people nations and their gods? And you established your people Israel for yourself to be your people forever. And you, O Lord, became their God. And now, O Lord God, as for the world that you, as for the word that you have spoken concerning your servant and concerning his house, confirm it forever. Do as you have promised. Thus your name will be magnified forever in the saying, the Lord of hosts is God over Israel. And the house of your servant David will be established before you. For you, O Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, have made this revelation to your servant, saying, I'll build you a house. Therefore, your servant has found courage to pray this prayer to you. And now, O Lord God, you are God, and your words are true, and you have promised this good thing to your servant. Now, therefore, may it please you to bless the house of your servant, so that it may continue forever before you. For you, O Lord God, have spoken, and with your blessing shall the house of your servant be blessed forever. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please rise. gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to the Judean town and the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this happening to me that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believes that there would be fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And then Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor upon the lowliness of his servants. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. Peace and grace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, believe it or not, in seminary, there's not a class in which they teach you how to pray. You'd think that'd be something that, they would, that they'd sit you down and, and teach you, uh, especially when it comes to worship and, and writing prayers week in and week out. Uh, I know I wanted a little bit of instruction in that. How exactly am I supposed to pray in worship? How am I supposed to pray generally for myself? But they didn't teach you that. You kind of had to sort it out for yourself. Luckily, we have a few models for us on 
on how to pray. You know, we, uh, we learn from our parents and our grandparents as we're young, uh, simple prayers like our, our nighttime prayers. Uh, we learn the Lord's Prayer just as the Lord taught uh, the prayer to his disciples. I was thinking about this this weekend, about needing examples on how to pray. And we know that the disciples, having seen uh, John's disciples uh, knowing how to pray, they asked Jesus, said, Jesus, teach us how to pray as John taught his disciples. And so Jesus teaches them the Lord's Prayer. The disciples easily could have gone to Jesus' mother for a lesson in prayer. Because Mary knew how to pray. And the Magnificat, her prayer, her song, is, is a great prayer rooted in, in Scripture. One that is a, a deep reflection of the heart. It is a prayer that is both uh, individual and personal and yet expansive and in, uh, corporate. It is a prayer that reflects hopes that have been fulfilled and hopes that are yet to be filled. It looks back and forward. It looks at what God has done and raises what up hopes for what God will do in the future. And for me, this prayer, this song has taken on greater meaning for me in my life, I think especially after having participated in Holden Evening Prayer uh, for the last five years or so, uh, to gather in a dark sanctuary in, in the midst of a dreary winter and to sing this song together in worship touches me in a way few, few things can and have. Mary says, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. I spent some time looking at the Greek in which this was written, trying to understand the difference between soul and spirits. Aren't they really the same thing? According to the, to the Greek, they are, uh, in fact, different words. Uh, with different meanings. But what I gather from this is that there is something inside Mary, deep within her being, that uh, is not definable, uh, not truly identifiable, but her essence, her soul, her spirit, whatever it might be, is compelled to sing, compelled to rejoice for what God has done for her. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Mary is compelled to pray, to sing, because of what the angel has proclaimed to her, what God has invited her into, but also because of what God has done and what God will do. And the whole of her prayer, the whole of her song is, again, that reflection of what God has done for her and for all people. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servants. God has looked upon her and taken notes. Just as God looked upon Hannah when she prayed her great prayer. And God, look upon me. Remember me. He has looked with favor on the loneliness of his servant. God has seen and heard Mary, heard me, and heard you. The Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. This is in part reference to what God is, is about to do with Mary, through Mary but it's also a remembrance of the great things God has done throughout history for God's people, Israel. 
as David said, as God came down and delivered the people. What other God has done these things? What other God has proven to be faithful to all generations? God's mercy is for those who fear him from generation from generation. Calling back to uh, the Old Testament, to Exodus, and the promise that fidelity to the Lord will result in mercy and blessing for generation to generation. God has shown strength with his arm. God has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from the thrones and lifted up the lowly. This is what God has done in the past, and this is the prayer of God's people for the future. For the day in which the powerful, the proud, the haughty, the arrogant will be cast down. And the meek and the lowly and the humble will be raised up. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. God has filled the hungry with good things and set, sent the rich away empty. That is, to me, a great word of hope for our world. For our world is full of hungry people who hunger not only in their bellies, but in their hearts and in their minds. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise God made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his descendants forever. God has remembered and is faithful and does not forget. As we near Christmas Day, as the world looks forward with hopeful expectation, we would do well to remember Mary's prayer for herself and for the world. This is what God has done. This is what God will do. God will turn the world upside down. He will raise up the lowly. He will cast down the proud. He will set all things right. He will make all things new. And the world will rejoice together. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Amen.
Please be seated. Let us confess together the faith we share in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. <clears throat> he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. By the hope, promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and for all those in need. As we near the end of our Advent journey, may we, like Mary, magnify your presence and love among us. Give us vision to work for reconciliation and equality. Overcome the hatred and misunderstanding that divide so many, and bring us all to a deeper awareness of our common humanity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Watch over all those who are enduring financial hardship, the threat of violence, the loss of homes and communities and loved ones. Encourage us to come to the aid of our neighbors and give them hope for a better tomorrow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You never forget us, whatever our pain, distress, or sorrow. Help, heal, comfort the sick, the hurt in body or mind, the abused, the prisoners, the discouraged, the fearful, and the dying. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Watch over the men and the women serving close to home and throughout the world in our nation's armed forces. Give them faith and courage. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless us of this congregation, gracious God, as we prepare for the celebration of the birth of Jesus. Grant to us the joy of knowing that because of him, we are your beloved children and help us live the life to which you have called us in faith and love and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray, as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the, ki the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. If you have not communed with us before, I invite you to follow the direction of the ushers. They will uh, lead you out and around. You will come down the center aisle. In the trays, there is a little individual communion cup uh, with a wafer, bread on top. You can eat the wafer, eat the bread, and then Pastor David and I will fill the cup for you with either wine. If you prefer, just ask for grape juice. Uh, there are also gluten-free wafers available in the center of the tray. As always, it is Jesus who offers the invitation to this table of grace, and all are welcome here. You may come as you are ready.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in God's grace. Amen. Most high God, you have come among us at this table. By the Spirit's power, form us to be bearers of your word, sharing gifts of mercy and grace with all. Through Christ Jesus, our host and our guest. Amen. And now may the Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord's face shine upon us with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon us with favor and grant us peace. Amen. be to God. Thank you.